Hi guys, what I thought I might do today here is show you how to do this really cool uh, hatching style illustration. We're going to be doing that using a photograph, but it could be applied to anything that you draw. So let's get into it and we'll have a bit of fun here. So here's, here's what I'm going to be creating my scrape or my hatched illustration from. It's a photograph. These things like uh, castles and country scenes and landscapes they all can be kind of fun but I'm going to do this one so before we start I'm on a new layer and what I need to do is create a brush now creating a brush obviously we have a whole bunch of brushes that come in Photoshop all sorts of brushes there's the more than you can shake a stick at but what I'd like to do and if you'll see what I'm doing is what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a very small little line here I'm going to draw a series of sort of straightish lines and it really doesn't matter if yours are not perfectly straight it gives it a bit of character and as you can see I'm pretty hopeless at drawing straight lines but essentially that's what I'm doing okay so there's what I'm going to call my brush and it's on that layer so I've just drawn a few straight lines. I'm going to get my selection tool and I'm just going to drag off a selection around that on that layer. So this here is going to be my brush. I'm going to go to the edit menu and I'm going to define that as a brush preset. Beautiful. Define as a brush preset. And there it is there. You can give it a name. I'm not going to. I'm going to say OK. Now I'm pretty much done with that. I can delete it. And command D to deselect. Oops, deselect. And my brush is going to look like that, which in and of itself is very cool. Um, but that's not what we're after. We need to set this brush up to behave in a particular way. So I'm going to change a few settings in my brushes. Now, the first time you play with brushes, and it can be a bit daunting, but from my experience, these top three are very much the go-tos. There's other things you can do, but for my money, one, two, and three will give you the most bang for your buck. So starting from the top, we have something called spacing. And as you can see, if I adjust the spacing of a brush, it, you know, I get this sort of look, and that's gonna be what will happen when I paint with my brush. Okay, so that sort of look. Okay, maybe I'll have that, just a bit of spacing. I might come to the second one down, Shape Dynamics and Size Jitter. So having the brush profile just jitter in terms of its size, I can have them all the same size or they can be a bit more random. And so that's probably something to do there. So also in the second setting, I might change my angle and I can see that, yes, this is starting to feel a little bit more like what I'm after and maybe the third one, maybe have a little bit of scattering. So if they're not all on the line, they're all a bit scattered. So maybe a little bit of that. So these top three really are my go-tos. So once I have those settings in place, I'm gonna get this look. Okay, and this is sort of the kind of look that I'm after for my painting, which feels pretty good to me. Okay, so we've created a brush and we've played with some of the settings. Fantastic. Okay, let's delete that. Now I need to come to my subject and of course any any subject will work and the photograph needn't be black and white. But we need to make some selections here. Okay, so we need to make a selection and typically you use the quick selection and the magic wand. But what I want to do here is use this thing called the colour range. And the colour range is a super duper tool, the colour range. And what I'm going to do, and yours will probably look different to mine as you first go there. But what I'm trying to sample, I want to sample the shadows. I want to pick out the shadows. That's the shadows that I want. And you can play with some of these settings, but I'm going to leave it like this. And that seems to be what I'm after. So that's the sort of selection. And you can try inverting it. Okay, so you can play with these settings. You know, you probably don't want to go too dark. Fuzziness will tend to soften the thing and range will be less or more black. So whatever you feel looks good. And I'm going to say, okay. 
and invert it. I'm going to say OK. So now I feel like I've got a selection of the shadows. OK, so I don't really need that image anymore. And I want to paint on the layer beneath of it. <clears throat> so then when I start to use my brush, it's only going to be painting into the shadows. And this is how we get that lovely sort of hatching look. And I'm just building this up, building this up. And as you can see, only the shadows are receiving my brush profile. It's a very cool look. Um, and it's really quite easy to do. And you can just carry on and make it look like a drawing. You don't want it to look like a photograph. It, it's got to look a bit rough and scattered and messed up a little bit. And, you do get a good look after it. So I'm just gonna, especially through the eyes perhaps, maybe through here, and a bit more through here, maybe a bit more under his nose, define that a little bit. And as you can see, after a while, you start to pick those blacks out and they really start to come up. You know, you've got to use your eye a little bit. Don't make it, don't fill it in completely. Make it look like a sketch. Um, and there we go, that's looking pretty good actually. So we've made a brush, we've defined a brush, and we've made a selection based on color. In this case, it was the shadows. And I'm gonna say deselect, command D. There's my sketched illustration. Really easy, really quick to do, and very effective. Good job, everybody. Look, I hope that's been helpful, and uh, let's see what you can do. I'll see you in class.